Good morning, friends, and welcome to our Sunday Online Liturgy. As we close off these final Sundays of this current church year, 2021, Year B, the year of Mark and John. We pray the Sunday Liturgy according to right one of the prayer book. We are a YouTube premiere and we are shared onto Facebook. Please to take a moment to post a greeting, share a comment, either on the YouTube comments or the Facebook comments. And know how grateful we are for your presence and your prayers among us. And now, friends, let us begin our prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in thy well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from the second book of Samuel. Now these are the last words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken the rock of Israel has said to me, One who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. He is not my house like this with God, for he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things, and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But the godless are all like thorns that are thorn thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hand. To touch them one uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
our psalm is Psalm 132, the first 13 verses of Psalm 132, which is found on page 785 of the prayer book, the first line that is, spilling over onto 786 of the prayer book, and it is also in the Sunday Bulletin. The first 13 verses of Psalm 132. Lord, remember David and all the hardships he endured, how he swore an oath to the Lord and vowed a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come under the roof of my house nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep nor let my eyelids slumber until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. The ark we heard it was in Ephrata, we found it in the fields of Jerem. Let us go to God's dwelling place. Let us fall upon our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people sing with joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David, in truth he will not break it. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their children will sit upon your throne forevermore. A reading from the Revelation to John. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priest serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings, and Lord of lords, whose coming is certain, and whose day draws near. Friends, Advent begins next Sunday. 
and yet it feels like we are already there. You may recall under the last prayer book that there were those three pre-Lenten Sundays with funny Latin names that simply pointed to the approaching Lenten days. The month of November may not have funny Latin names associated to the Sundays before Advent. Yet in spite of that, it is clear that All Saints' Day and All Souls' Day mark a transition in the time of the Church from the present to the future, from what is to what shall be. In these pre-Advent days, our horizon may change, but our focus remains steadfast. Our focus at all times is Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, and the true Bishop of our souls, the Good Shepherd who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As we enter into this week and these days of transition between one church year and the next, I invite you, I invite us, to be steadfast in that focus upon Jesus Christ. It is this focus that will keep us grounded and filled with peace, not as the world gives, but as it is known only in the kingdom of God from the hand of God. There are forces all around us that seek to take peace from us and pull the ground out from under our feet. We know this. We are seeking to be church in days when the difficulties and challenges of being church should be called legion, for they are many. Some of these challenges are rather innocent. These days have reminded us that old habits die quickly and are very difficult to resuscitate after they have died. Some of these challenges are anything but innocent. Voices of chaos and disorder have striven to divide and conquer us, to justify groupings of like-minded folks for the praise of the self and the demonization of others not like them, not like us. The temptation before us is to focus on the challenges. If that is our focus, what will be our attitude? I don't really need to answer that question, do I? Surely I do not need to say out loud that a focus on the challenges will not be life-giving and that our sharing will not be uplifting. But maybe I do need to say this. If we are focused on our challenges, then we are merely proclaiming ourselves. If we merely proclaim ourselves, we have nothing to offer for the challenges of life in the church and in the world. We are in days when we, as the followers of Jesus, need to be more attentive than ever to the fifth book of the New Testament, the Acts of the Apostles. At some point not long after that first day of Pentecost, Peter and John were entering the temple for the ninth hour of prayer, three o'clock in the afternoon. They encountered a lame beggar at the beautiful gate of the temple. He sought alms from them. Recall Peter's words to this man. I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. Peter makes Jesus known to him and invites him in the name of Jesus to stand up and walk. The lame man stands and walks with Peter and John and enters with them into the temple, praising God with them. Can we embrace these words of Peter? Can we discern in these words where our focus needs to be at all times and in all places? Our focus is Jesus Christ, and we are called to make Christ known. Our expectation should be that this focus will change lives, beginning with our own. And how will our lives change? 
Hopefully, if and when we focus on Jesus, the challenges we face will leave us not with impediments, but opportunities. Not feeling like we lack something, but trusting that we have everything needed. Brothers and sisters, in these challenging days for being the church, there are persons all around us who need to hear gospel, good news, and who need to feel loved by us and by God. There are persons all around us who are looking for something of meaning and purpose that gives worth to their lives if we offer them silver or gold at best. We fail them. If we merely present ourselves and our many challenges, we fail them. But if we present Jesus not merely in words, but in deeds of welcome and love that speak greater than words, we offer a priceless gift. And how do we present Jesus? How did Peter present Jesus? Peter was first and foremost a student, a disciple. Friends, no matter how long we have been in the fellowship of the church, remember that we are all students, disciples of Jesus and of the gospel. Years ago, while in seminary, a well-known Swedish New Testament scholar and bishop spoke on the years of his ministry and teaching of the scriptures. He was in his early 80s at that point. A fellow student asked him this question, Archbishop, have you ever read a passage of Scripture without encountering something you have never seen before? Without a hesitation, he offered a resounding no. You've been after a life, a long life as a baptized Christian and a long ministry as a bishop of the church. He remained a student of the Scriptures of faith, of life. I cannot begin to number how many homilies I have preached over the years of my ministry. I can absolutely affirm, however, the sentiments of this bishop and disciple of Jesus. I long for us all to always be disciples of Jesus. The main reason I say that is this. There are persons all around us who are presenting Jesus not as who Jesus is, but whom they wish to Je Jesus to be for themselves and for the world. The problem in this is that what they are proclaiming then is themselves and not Jesus. The reason that this is a problem is that this often drives people away from Jesus rather than provoking them to the awareness that they are loved by Jesus. And if we respond to this merely by proclaiming ourselves, even those aspects of us that are commendable, we are giving nothing noteworthy and significant to people who are famished. As disciples of Jesus, we have opportunities. Our online prayers have drawn in others who were not darkening the doors of the church before this pandemic. We have the ability to speak love, not ours, but God's, to persons who have not heard or who have forgotten. If we think that the purpose is only to bring them inside the church's buildings, we are failing them. If we can embrace that we are simply called to make Jesus known to them where they are, then we can witness a transformation that is not our doing, but God's touch through our presence. As we approach a new journey through the gospel, let us commit ourselves to knowing Jesus and making Jesus known through the power and tenderness of the gospel. Let us renew our commitment to discipleship that we might proclaim not ourselves, but the one who sees us and knows us, whose love and mercy are unconditional and limitless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
we profess our faith in the traditional form of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer our prayers in the prayers of the people in a traditional form of Form 4 of the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess thy name may be united in thy truth, live together in thy love, and reveal thy glory in the world. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in thy mercy, Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as thine own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to thy honor and glory. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name in our hearts, on our lips, and those found on our parish prayer list.
Give them courage and hope in their trouble and bring them the joy of thy salvation. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to thy mercy all who have died, that thy will for them may be fulfilled, especially those we name in our hearts and on our lips, and those who are found in our parish prayer list. And we pray that we may share with all thy saints in thine eternal kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now, dear friends, we bring our Sunday online liturgy to a close with an act of spiritual communion. 
turning to Christ, our great high priest, bread of heaven and the cup of salvation, trusting that he is always able and willing and desiring to feed us, to strengthen us, to equip us for our life of faith. So we make this act of spiritual communion, praying the words that our Savior Christ has taught us, and praying the prayer of St. Alphonsus for a spiritual communion. After which we will take a moment of silence to ponder on our communion in Christ. To wait upon the Lord who is always with us and among us to be our strength and our salvation. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that thou art truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love thee above all things and long for thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou hast already come, I embrace thee and unite myself entirely to thee. Never permit me to be separated from thee. Amen. Let us pray for the Lord's blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you, friends, for joining us for this Sunday online liturgy. If you've not done so yet, please do take a look at the bulletin and the calendar. We invite you to enter deeply into these days Know that you are always welcome with us and among us, online and in person. You are a blessing to us. And we hope and pray to be a blessing to you all. If you've not yet posted a greeting or a comment, either in the YouTube comments or the Facebook comments, please do so, so that we know that you have been here among us and praying with us. And thank you again for being with us. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.